I am back with my next design team project for Country Craft Creations. So this is an update of my quad fold, quad fold folio <laughs> that I did last year. It was, I don't remember if it was my first or my second design team project for Country Craft Creations. And I have redone it using the new Easy Wrap method. And the reason for that is when you're using that method on any other tutorial, if it's just a normal album where you have a front and a back cover and a spine, you know, folio or not, you know, with their, if hinge with pages, whatever it may be, um, you don't have to change the sizing. When you do something like a gate fold, or in this case, the quad fold, it does actually change the dimensions just a little bit because you don't have that eighth of an inch gap between each chipboard piece because these do go right up against each other. So you end up losing almost a quarter of an inch of space within the album itself. And the only reason I know this is because I have actually redone a gatefold album of mine for a friend and all of my inside stuff was just off just a little bit that I had to cut everything down just a little bit. So. That's what I did. Honestly, this thing takes on a completely different look with this paper. I'm using the Summer Farmhouse Still by um, Simple Stories. So let's get into this. Very simple front. I just took one of the six by or four by six from the Snap Pack, triple matted it, and popped it up on the front. Just use one of the stickers from this, or a couple of the stickers from the sticker sheet, and one of the chipboard elements there to decorate. I did do a tie closure on this one, and I did dual, um, whatever this stuff is, seam binding. <laughs> Gosh, I'm losing my mind. It's been a long day. Um, so when you get in here, these are just tuck spots. So you can tuck, you know, a couple of different things back behind here. And then it opens up all the way. And we're going to start over here on the left. So over here, we've got little tuck spot here with the, the sticker there and a photo mat. In here you've got just a very simple insert that I've just matted using one of the cut aparts that you could journal and put pictures here and on the back. When you get inside you've got another pocket in here. We've got a 4x6 waterfall that is a portrait so you know how we all tend to hold our phones and take pictures. Perfect for that. There is a pocket behind there, so I've got just another very simple insert back behind that. In our middle section, we've got a belly band with a very simple booklet here. I didn't do much decorating on this. I couldn't really decide what I'll end up doing most likely is just keeping those extra ephemera pieces and stickers and whatnot with this, you know, so if I were to put pictures in here, I could add you know, whatever I decided to add later on. So this flips to the side. We've got another good photo mat there. A couple of photo mats here and here with a half page flap. And then this is another pocket in here. So you can get several photos in there as well. On our third panel, and this is the only place in here that has a magnet. This opens up this way and then out this way. And you've got another little booklet in here that again, I kept it very simple for photos. You've got space here, here, you know, all over the place in here for pictures. Tons and tons of space. And this is just another one of those snap cards again. Same thing with the one that I've got tucked over here. It's just another one of those snap cards. So this, I love this. I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed this one. So this is my expanding pocket, okay? And what I did here, let me get these snap cards out of here. So I've cut this and matted this in such a way that the paper basically just continues down across the front. And I do go through in the tutorial exactly how to cut this and assemble it so that if you're doing this like this, it will continue just right down the front like that. And I just, I don't know, I thought that was cool. But these do expand out so you can put quite a bit in here because you've got more space on this side because this side the elements are a little bit thicker than on this side. So you've got space that you could really pack these fairly full and you would still have more than enough space to close up your folio. So uh, just very simple matting 
front and back and there you go. I will get the tutorial. We'll start right now. Okay, so let's start with our chipboard. For the spine, you need one piece that is eight inches by one and a half inches. You need two pieces that are eight inches by half an inch. And for the base, you need four pieces that are eight inch by six and three quarter. This is where the difference is between the original with the original wrap method where you're, you know, putting all the pieces together and putting it all down and then wrapping the whole thing at once. That's where the difference comes in because you don't have that automatic, that built in eighth of an inch between each piece and the spine because these are so much closer together. You actually lose a little bit of space across when you're building your book. If you're doing something normal that just has, you know, front back and it flips open like that, it doesn't really matter because typically you're leaving, you know, a half an inch to a quarter of an inch from your hinge to the outside edge of your book. When you're doing anything that folds in on itself or has, you know, a different kind of fold, so like a gate fold, or in this case where the sides fold in and then the whole thing folds together, it does actually make a difference in the amount of space you have for everything that goes in the middle, which is why we're redoing this using the easy wrap method just because it is so much easier to put together this way. So four pieces, six and three quarters by eight. You're gonna need three pieces that are four by seven and seven eighths that are gonna be our um, reinforcement on the inside. So I'm gonna set those to the side. To wrap the cover pieces, you need four pieces that are eight and three quarters by 10. For the spine, you need one that is four and a half by 10 and two that are three and a half by 10. Okay, we're gonna start with our, getting everything attached down to our, our chipboard attached to our wrap pieces. So for the spine, we're gonna start with the bigger one. And we want a one inch at the top, we want an inch and a half on each side. Okay, so I've got my templates. Let me go ahead and get my backing off my score tape. Go ahead and just put that down. Do the same thing with our other pieces. I think this one's actually just slightly off. It looks wrong. Hold on. No, it's fine. It was just how I put the tape on there. That's okay. It might be a hair bigger at the bottom, but it will be okay. And I will admit it's very difficult to cut the chipboard that small. I would suggest when you're trying to cut something this narrow with the chipboard, cut this first from your full sheet and then cut your cover or whatever. It just makes it a little bit easier to, to hold this and cut this and get it to cut right. Okay. So now we're gonna switch out to our one inch template for the sides. And this did take, I think it was three and a half sheets of the eight and a half by 11 score tape. I used three sheets or did I use four sheets? Hmm, I'm not actually sure <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. I did use three because I used partial piece on there and then on the, I could have used the other partial piece on my spine pieces, but I ended up using it on using just the half inch score tape that I had instead. Either one will work.
All right. All right, so we can put our templates away. I'm going to move the scoreboard for just a minute. All right, so let's wrap our covers. And for this part, I need my scissors, my quarter inch score tape, and my glue. So all we're going to do is use that chipboard and my bone folder, fold it over, and then crease it down. Okay, turn it over, do the same side, thing on the other side. Go ahead and do the folding on all of these and then we'll do the assembly rather than I don't know I find it easier if you have repetitive steps like this to do all of one step and then move on to the next one it's entirely up to you if you want to like fold and then you know get everything wrapped and glued and taped and so on and so forth and then move on to your next one it's entirely up to you I just I don't know I think it comes from years of making many many of one thing like a card or something like that that it's kind of like assembly line style you pick one step and you do it for everything and then you go to the next step and you do it for everything so that you're not getting your you know, scoreboard out, score the page, you know, cut the page, put the trimmer away, score the page, put the scoreboard away, you know, so on and so forth. Just to me, this makes more sense. Okay. We do the same thing with our spine pieces. And for these small ones, it is going to be a little bit tricky to get it all the way over where you need to. You just need to just take it slow be patient it's best if you actually I hang on to it like this and push over and then down for the end same thing because or that's such a narrow piece of chipboard it's gonna try to bend with the paper and you don't want it to bend you just want the paper to bend Okay, so again, I'm just putting my fingers on there, holding that steady, and essentially almost pushing it back against the cardstock to get it to fold over that way. creased quite right on that one but that's okay in the end the way we wrap it it's honestly not going to make a difference and because this one's bigger it's a little bit easier to do okay so since we have our spine piece in front of us we're going to cut the triangle off. So you have essentially your square here where you folded everything and you're just going to go edge to edge and cut that triangle out of that square. Okay. And do the same thing on these two. And to this album, this method of wrapping the albums is a lot more forgiving, I think. You know, aside from the fact that it's easier on your hands, you know, you're not trying to wrangle some big long piece of paper and, you know, tape 17 sheets together and, you know, so on and so forth. 
you know, it's a lot more forgiving if something's not exactly straight because it's not going to cause the entire project to be off when you're in this stage. So, all right, so for our cover pieces, once again, where we folded, this time we're cutting out the square. you've done that you want to clean up your corners make sure nothing's hanging over so you get a nice clean corner when everything's folded you don't want to angle it too far in just use your chipboard as your guide pivot ever so slightly and miter that corner just a tiny tiny bit do the exact same thing on these four pieces, the other three. that one's really off you can see okay two more to go and then we can start wrapping and assembling you've done the easy wrap cover a couple of times the more you do this one the faster and easier it gets quite honestly if I'm not recording and trying to you know demonstrate and teach you guys I literally can put together one of these easy wrap covers start to finish I mean including cutting my chipboard and my mat or my my wrap pieces and everything in like 10 minutes Whereas the other method, oh, it took forever. <laughs> I think it took a lot longer. Okay. We're on the home stretch, I promise. <laughs> I'm sure it's so exciting to watch me trim all of this. I don't know. I work from home normally, even before all the virus stuff. So a lot of times I would find tutorials and I would turn them on just as background noise because I'm here all day by myself, <laughs> which is probably kind of weird, but I don't know. It was just, you know, I don't have a TV in my office, so it was easy to just put on YouTube and and you know listen to a craft video while I work <laughs> so okay got that all ready to go what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do tape quarter inch score tape we're gonna do it along the edge and then again in here closer to the chipboard.
okay. And normally I would go through and tape everything else, but we're just gonna go ahead and get this kind of moving so that you know where ultimately where we're going with this. So just make sure everything's burnished down. I have to keep reminding myself I'm using white cardstock for a base, which I don't usually do because it's so easy to get it messed up before you get matted and get like, you know, weird dusty streaks on it. So I have to keep reminding myself. I did scrub my mat off really good before I started doing this, but still. Okay, so we're gonna get the backing off all of our score tape. It's easier to just do it all at once, I think. And you're gonna come in here with your glue you get the little dried clump off the end of it, apparently. All right. We're going to run glue right along the edge of the chipboard. And then in between your score tape. Take your bone folder. You're going to push it up against the edge of the chipboard and then bring it over and down. The reason we're using glue and score tape, the glue will help it stay stuck forever. The score tape helps it stick immediately. <laughs> so you're not having to sit here and hold it and keep burnishing and, you know, waiting for that glue to start to dry and to catch. This way it all just attaches immediately. And makes the process a little bit easier. Okay. All right. So there's our first face piece. I do the exact same thing on the other three. And then for our spines, they're going to be just a little bit different. So let's go ahead and do these. faster now just because and two this one's going to take just a tiny bit longer because we do have what's five four or five extra pieces four extra pieces that we wouldn't normally have on just a traditional album or folio this is the quad fold so there's you know two extra large panels and two extra spine pieces off our backing and 
glue our sides down. Next one. If you've got any tape hanging over like this, just Fold it over. All right. We're gonna run that down there. All right, so we've got our four cover pieces. Now we can look at our spines. So on the spine, all we're going to wrap is this right here. We're gonna leave our wings out because that's how we're gonna attach this to the cover pieces. So we're gonna go ahead, use a little piece of score tape, a longer piece. And you can put this down before you trim those corners off if you want to, if that's not going to make it too hard for you to see where to trim. Or you can do it after the fact. It's fine. It really doesn't matter. Again, if you've got anything hanging out over the side, just go ahead and push that over. Or trim it off. It's your choice. We're going to do the same thing on this that we did on the other. Okay. 
we're going to run our glue along that score line, or fold line, I guess it really is, and then over and then push both of those sides down. If you have a little bit of glue leaking out, just wipe it off. But that's what you're going for. Okay. And do the same thing on the other side. Okay. All right, I'm going to set that aside. We're going to do our other two. And then we'll miter the tops of these ever so slightly, but I will show you that in just a second. does not want to come off. <laughs> it happens. Not a big deal. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is you can kind of see how that bumps out just a tiny bit. What we're going to do is you're going to put your scissors against the edge of your chipboard, pivot just a tiny bit, and just barely miter that edge. Okay? So, use your chipboard as the guide. Put the scissors against the chipboard right there at the edge. Pivot it out just slightly and just cut off that little tiny piece. That just is gonna guarantee it's not gonna stick out along the top of your book. You're gonna do that on all three of these spine pieces. side for right now. I'm gonna move some stuff off of my scraps and things out of the way here. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take our spine pieces and you're going to do this on all three and you're just going to burnish. You're going to push against that chipboard and just burnish so you're working that cardstock down over the edge. Okay, so you can see how there's now a line you're going to do this on all three. 
we need to have that line so we know where to put our score tape to attach our covers. And you don't have to make your wings on this this wide. You can do the one inch all the way around your chipboard just like you do with this, and that's totally fine. This just gives it a little more area to grab onto when you're assembling, and I think makes it just a tiny bit easier. So, all right, so now you've got that kind of worked down. And actually I meant to use three eighths, not quarter, but that's okay. We'll just do it with quarter, it's fine. You're gonna put score tape on the wings. Okay, so you want your finish side up, not your raw side, finish side up, and you're gonna run your score tape. And you don't wanna go all the way up to the chipboard where you burnish that line because you don't wanna see this because when the book is closed, it's gonna fold over like this. So you don't want that chipboard going or that score tape going all the way up into that area because you would then see it when the book bends, okay? So you wanna keep it about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. And we're gonna do this on all three. burnish these down. We're actually going to start with our small ones. Move these out of the way. And grab one of our cover pieces. I'm going to pull the score tape backing off of one side. just because I work better going this way. <laughs> you can do it either way, it doesn't matter. We're going to do our glue in between our score tape again. And then using your finger as a guide, I line my cover piece up on top of the spine, so where there is no glue, tape, whatever. I line it up and then I just ever so slowly drag it off the edge of the chipboard and then down. Okay, turn it over and burnish. I've got just a tiny bit of that cover hanging over that I did not mean to have it hang over, but that's okay. I will fix it later. Okay, and there's your first piece. Okay, so our next cover piece is gonna go on this other side. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Okay. And again, we're lining up, dropping off the edge of the chipboard, and down. it down, come in here on the back side and burnish, kind of work that spine down in between. There's our first section. Okay, we're going to do our other small section first and then we'll attach them both to the big one. So, let's get that ready. The exact same thing again, backing off the score tape. glue in between 
between line it up and down we go turn around do the same thing on the other side All right, so there's our second, okay? So now we just need to attach our centerpiece. And we're gonna do that the exact same way. It is going to be a little bit weird because you've got, you know, of course, something flexible on this other side that you're trying to adhere, but I promise it will work. Same method, line it up, push it down. Looks like I'm losing my bone folder in my garbage pile over here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Same thing again. We're going to line up. Oops. <laughs> it helps if I get all the way across the spine before I start trying to do that. And down. Okay. Pull thing over. And burnish. So there we go. There's our folder. How about that? All right. So. Now we have our three pieces that go inside to reinforce. I have backed those with tape, not score tape, my other weird die cut tape that I'm trying to use up. It's almost gone. Because <laughs> I mean it works, it's just, I don't know. I don't like it as well as the score tape. And we're just gonna line that up, center it up. Put it down. Same thing over here. And I have these at four by seven and seven eighths, and really the center one probably should be longer. This one probably needs to be four by six. Um, I'm sorry, seven and seven eighths by six, not four by six. Seven and seven eighths by six. But I'm just going to go with it the way it is. It's fine. Because once this is all matted and whatnot, you won't know the difference. And it's not like my albums I do for this ever get pictures or used at all. <laughs> I'm going to be like that. Okay, so got everything in here. I've got to come back in and trim off that little piece that's sticking up too far, but that's okay. All right, I'm just going to bolt, fold and burnish that down into that crease. Okay, and then go to the other side of the spine and do the same thing. 
Okay, that's just gonna help that fold after you've got that piece on there. And you can even push it all the way down flat like that and like that to help that that bend and, and um, get settled in there. Which is another nice thing that, about this type of album is because you don't have to worry about your spine cracking or this album wrap method that is. You don't have to worry about your spine cracking because there's nothing wrapped around the back there to crack, which is awesome. Because I know that was probably, that was my biggest frustration when I first started making my albums from scratch as opposed to doing ring bound. Oh, don't do that like I just did. Poke a hole in your cardstock. Um, was the fact that you know, every time I turned around, it seemed like my cardstock was cracking. And I mean, as it is, the artisan, it takes a lot for the artisan cardstock to crack, but still. Okay, so there is our base. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, so for our first panel, we're gonna have two inserts. These are seven and five eighths by five and five eighths. You can just cut those and set them aside. You're going to have one large flap. Your large flap is going to be seven and seven eighths by seven and three quarters. You're going to score it with the seven and seven eighths on top at one inch and one and one eighth. That flap has two pockets. The first pocket is six inches by eight and seven eighths. I scored a half an inch turn, half an inch, turn, and half an inch. And then it's got a smaller pocket that goes on the back. The smaller pocket is going to be five and three quarters by seven. You're going to score half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn, and then half an inch again. You have another pocket that goes that your waterfall is going to go on top of. So this one is six and five eighths by seven and a half. You score half an inch with the six and five eight, or I'm sorry, the seven and a half on top is where you're going to start. Turn it half an inch again. Turn it one more time. Half an inch again. The band that holds the waterfall is going to be four and a half by one and three eighths. You're going to score that at half an inch. And then your waterfall, you need to cut five that are six and one eighth, sorry, six and one eighth by four and five eighths. And you're going to score all of these at half an inch. Okay, I've scored the rest of those, so they're ready to go. Okay, everything there is cut and scored. I'm going to clip it back together. And you can totally rearrange the order of the panels. This is just what seemed to work best. So, so not the right one. Hold on. Panel number two has a flap that apparently didn't get anything right on it. I don't think this is supposed to be with that. <laughs> I think that's what's confusing me here. my inserts for that. All right, that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so there is an insert for panel two that is... Have I gotten these all out of order? No. I'm not sure what this piece is. <laughs> all right, let's start with our flap. Okay, panel two flap is going to be seven and three quarters by six. We're going to score this at half an inch. The next flap is going to be seven and three quarters by five. 
And we're going to score that one at half an inch with the five inch side at the top of the scoreboard. Our pocket is going to be four and a quarter by seven and one eighth. And we're going to score this at half an inch on three sides, starting with the seven and one eighth side on top. There is a half page flap. This is going to be four and three eighths by four and three eighths, scored at half an inch. And a belly band that is eight and three quarters by two. You're going to score it at half an inch on each end of the long side. There's an insert that goes underneath the belly band. And maybe that's what that one is. And I think the other one's in the wrong pile. Aha, it is. So our insert is going to be seven and a half by 10. We are going to score that at five inches. Because I did my inserts and I didn't write on them that they were inserts. Okay, panel three. also has an insert it does and again 10 by seven and a half scored at five inches the right and left flaps you need two pieces seven and seven eighths by three and nine sixteenths I realize that's a weird measurement but that way they meet up in the middle okay so with that three and nine sixteenths side at the top, you're going to score it half an inch. Okay. The two flaps that go underneath are six and one eighth by five. We're going to score those at half an inch with the five inch side on the top. Because these fold up and down, those fold side, the other, the, the narrow ones fold side to side. Okay, and then our belly band for this one is seven and one eighth by two, and again, we're going to score it half an inch on the ends. Okay, and our fourth panel, and this one is, I love this one, it's fun. This is our expanding pockets. There are five pieces. They are all 12 inches wide. They are three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and five and a half. Okay. You're gonna score with the 12 inch side on the top, you're gonna score this at half an inch. And six and one quarter. And then turn it so the long slide is going down. You're going to score it half an inch. Okay. So again, half an inch down the long side. And then half an inch and six and a quarter. and a quarter, turn, half an inch. Okay, one more time, half an inch, six and one quarter, and then half an inch again. Okay. I am going to get myself reset and then we will be back and get this assembled. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. So I have already matted the front and back. I did just do a very simple ribbon closure for the end here. It's just attached under the front and the back matting. On the inside, I will put some, probably some little tuck spots in here, um, just because I love that paper. I don't want to, I love that wood grain. I don't know. I don't know what it is about that, but. <laughs> 
Okay, so inside we're going to start over here on our first panel on the left. And this is the panel that has our waterfall. It has the pocket the waterfall sits on, and then it's got the flaps with the pockets on it. So let's go ahead and we need to get these this flap on before we put the pocket down. So let's get that all set up, ready to go. And I did have an incorrect measurement. I will put it on the screen and it will of course be correct in the cut list, but this is seven and three quarters by seven and three eighths, not seven and seven eighths. <laughs> the scoring was correct. It was the actual measurement of the pocket itself that was wrong. And then I also had, this one was also wrong. It's, um, no, it wasn't. No, this one was okay. It's a different one. Anyway, we're good. <laughs> okay, so I've got this pocket prepped, ready to go. And this one goes on the back of the page. The only thing I haven't done on this one, and this is completely optional. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. What I had done on the original album is I had notched this, um, Uh, the pockets on this so and I don't think I did it on actually I probably did do it on all of them and I've got some other ones matted if you wanted to notch it all you need is circle punches you would put this halfway which I have it marked on my punch and you would punch this and then for your matting you would just do the next size up so in this case it would be one and one and a quarter inch but I am not going to notch these this time so just in case you are have seen the original of this with the old wrap style and you're doing this with the new one, the original did have those um, uh, notched and I'm not going to do that this time. So, all right, so this one we are going to mat underneath this pocket just because it's not as wide as the page. So then we've got that edge, that decorative edge. And you totally could make this pocket a little bit wider so it is the same width as the page. It's up to you. This one, I did not want to do that. So, you're going to. And my matting's slightly off apparently because it shouldn't be that much, but that's okay. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put the pocket down. And I do have all of the rest of my pockets trimmed and prepped. We will do it together on this one that goes on the front of this page. Just let me turn it this way. So this is the front, this is the back. The pocket needs to go on like this. All right, so I'm just gonna center this up. I guess it was about the same width, wasn't it? That's okay. Put it to the bottom of the page. We'll get that first bottom flap down and then we'll come in and do our sides at the same time. I got my mat on there or my pocket crooked on the other. <laughs> this has not been my day today. Can I just tell you, it's been a very weird day. So this one, I am actually matting this with the branding strip still attached because I really kind of liked how that looked. <laughs> um, and that's something you can always do just to stretch your paper maybe that little bit further when you've got, you know, if you cut it where you've got that entire branding strip that shows on the bottom that's got the, the print from the, the reverse side of the paper, that's always a fun thing to do. So. On this side, we will prep this pocket together. So this is our eight and seven eighths by six inch pocket. What we're gonna do down here on the corners where we've scored, we're just gonna cut straight across that corner to miter that corner. Doing it that way, that means when we fold these in, it's gonna just, they're not gonna overlap, they're just gonna lay flat, okay? 
We are also going to miter the top edge just ever so slightly, and you're going to do this on every pocket. Okay. The only thing we don't do that on, same thing with the flaps. We need to actually miter the flap on this too. I knew there was one I left unmitered for a reason. We're going to go from that outside score line and just miter. Okay. The only things you're not going to do that on are going to be your waterfall. You don't want to miter the waterfall or it just makes it look weird. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over. This pocket does load to the side. You can put it coming this way. You can put it going the other way. I'm going to keep it going this way. So we're going to go ahead our glue in the back and you'll see mitering it that way makes that lay nice and flat okay so we're going to center this up top to bottom and I am slightly off on this I'm not sure why I'm way off on this Oof. okay we're going to come back to that pocket because I think I need to recut it because that or fix it because that's not right it shouldn't be that far off there's my should not be that far off at all. Oh yeah, I'm like an eighth of an inch off. Okay, so this might have been eight and three quarters maybe instead of eight and seven eighths. I suspect just because I do this and I usually try to change it on my notes that I may not have, I might have adjusted my measurements at some point without realizing it. Oh, wait, did I pick up the wrong one? Is this one smaller? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let's try this again. We're gonna come in here. We are gonna Apologize for that. I'm not usually that messed up on this stuff, but like I said, today has not been my day as far as measuring things goes. It's just been a complete nightmare over here. <laughs> start trying to glue again and make sure. Much better. Okay. Now we can glue it down. Okay. You want that just barely away from the score line. Keep in mind this page does have an eighth inch gusset just so that it closes right over that waterfall that's in the back. Okay. Which means I'm probably going to have to adjust this by just a touch. Go ahead and put that down. Make sure that's where I want it. Yeah. Yes. Needs to trim down just a touch. And we're 
I'm going to slide that one just down in the top here. So before we put anything down, we need to get our ribbon in here that's going to hold this closed. So I think I am going to use, I want to use the yellow, the red, or the navy. Not the, not the red. I think I am going to use the yellow. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I am going to take small piece of half inch score tape and I'm going to put it about halfway and I'm just kind of eyeballing this here because I mean it'll be fine okay and put another piece on the opposite side what we're going to do then is cut some of our seam binding and get that down and then we'll put our flap down we'll put our pocket down and it will all be nice and hidden underneath all right so now we're going to fold the first score line. We're not going to fold the second one with the gusset. We're just going to fold that first score line. We're going to line this up on this edge and glue it down. that and then we've got our gusset so you see push back and now our gusset's folded as well okay so for our pocket that the waterfall sits on top of go ahead and fold that before I put that down I am going to get its matting underneath here which apparently I didn't trim so it needs to be about six and five inches. I apologize, I thought I had this one trimmed, but apparently I didn't. I don't remember which one I was gonna do. I think I was doing it that way. good enough care of my glue. <laughs> Truly, I forget and like will walk away from my table for an hour or two and forget to put the pin back in it. So yeah, it's my own fault. For crying out loud. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I mat off camera most of the time because then you don't have to watch me fight with my glue bottle because that's so much fun I'm sure okay so that's going to go down right here at the top I'm going to switch glues because I'm tired of fighting with this one I'll try the other one hopefully it's a little bit better <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead now we can do this one of two ways. We can go ahead and put this down and then do our waterfall. Or we can do our waterfall on the pocket and then put it down. I think I'm actually going to put the pocket down first because it's going to be a lot easier to get this down and positioned when you don't have that waterfall sitting on top of it.
and I'm not putting it all the way, yes I am putting it all the way to the bottom, sorry. And it is not quite as wide as our matting up here and that will be fine. If you wanted to run another little strip down here, you totally could, it's entirely up to you. I'm fine with it the way it is. So my pocket didn't stick. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna All right, now, got our waterfall, we're ready to go. I'm gonna turn this sideways because as you know, I cannot do them right side up, I have to do them upside down. And this is just gonna go on here, just like so. Okay, and I am, before we get to that I'm gonna erase that off of there even though most of it's gonna get covered up I don't want to take any chances okay and I did pre-map my waterfall and then just go up against the bottom of the piece before it And I did end up leaving out the little band I had on here originally I had you cut because where we're tying this whole section shut really we don't need it it's absolutely not necessary so just in case you're wondering but if you were going to put that in there you do need to put a magnet on the back side of it and also underneath the top flap of your waterfall, okay? So we just need a piece down in here to mat. And I didn't cut that just because I wasn't sure what ultimately I was gonna need. All right, so we're almost four by six right there too. So let me see, since I haven't used any of those yet. We've got one of these we wanna use. in nicely with everything around it. It was just a hair under four inches that we need in there, so I am going to take just a tiny bit off of this. And I'm going to do part of what I need to take off off of each side so that my graphic that is on here is still centered. Okay. that up and it just needs a little bit of decoration and that panel is done I have two inserts that go in here one that goes in here and one that goes behind the waterfall I always do my inserts last just so that I'm matting those primarily with scraps I'm not having to really cut into new pieces of paper to mat those in case you're wondering why we're not doing that part yet. So this side has a pocket that goes down in the back and then it's got two flaps that overlap. We've got a bigger flap and a smaller flap that go like so. The smaller flap has a little half page flap on the back side, which we're not putting that on just yet so that we can get this lined up right first, okay? 
we need to get our flaps down before we put down our pocket because these need to sit underneath that pocket. I just need to miter my corners on these. Get those folded. All right. So I'm going to start with the bigger flap. And this one is where the belly band sits on the front of it that the, our other little insert goes in, our little folio insert. Folio, booklet, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going almost to my hinge point here, centering it up top to bottom. I'm going to turn it this way so I can get the other one on. And then I'm going to line this up using that one so that they get lined up top to bottom. And because this isn't as wide as our section right here, I can actually leave that down just like that while I do it, which is going to make it that much easier to line this up. All right. Okay, so those are both in. We can go ahead and do our pocket that sits here in the back. Okay, so the pocket isn't quite as wide as the entire panel here. I've got about a quarter of an inch on each side. So I can either mat all the way underneath this. I could use decorative just you know scraps that I could run up the side and that would work too because I had planned on putting that one up above it which really it looks okay like that. I kind of like it that way, actually. I know, I heard you. Okay. Make sure you want to come with me. No, I'm recording. go ahead and mat underneath that. You know what, I think I'm going to leave it actually. Or I could really even do a solid underneath that and then mat on top of it. I think that's actually what we're going to do. So let me grab So we're going to put the pocket down. Okay. Yeah, I think that's 
that's fine. And you, again, could make this pocket a little bit wider. I honestly think I've got like some screwy measurements on the original of this um, because it was still really early on with me recording and doing tutorials and doing cut lists and all of that so it wouldn't surprise me. our half page flap down so I've got it matted I know how it's going so I'm going to line it up here in that upper corner make sure it's flush top and the outside and then I'm going to put that tab down and then it's going to fold down like that you're going to mat up top here with this stripe. No, ice cream. Haha, <laughs> we are doing ice cream on this one. Or are we doing stripe? I think we're doing the stripe. Sorry. solid underneath. And I'm sure this paper collection has a matching solid. I do not have it, but I always advise getting those because they really do come in handy, especially with photo mats. Um, I'm not one that does white photo mats typically. Although in some cases it looks really, really nice and I always think later on, oh, I should have done it that way. But I don't always think of that. Oh, for crying out loud, I cannot do this today with the glue. There we go, that's better. Okay, so we're gonna mat this one underneath. And is it too long too? What is my problem today? Or did I pick up the wrong one? Which is also a distinct possibility because I've got a scrap sitting over here that's now not right either. This is not my day for measurement, people. Not at all, not even remotely. Good Lord. I'm going to a croft this weekend and I don't have to think about anything all weekend long. <laughs> okay, so that goes down there. Burnish that down just a touch. And then this one gets the little belly band that sits on the top. Let's make sure this is the right size. Is there anything on a roll today? Yes, it is. And when you have your little insert in there, this will lay down. Much flatter than it's doing at the moment. Okay, so that one, once you have your insert in here and matted and, you know, cute and whatnot, it does help with that to get it to lay down. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next panel. This one's really, really easy. So, you've got two flaps that open out this way. You've got a flap that opens down and a flap that opens up. Okay? And you get all of these down first. We're going to start on this side. On my original, I had used a pretty edge punch. 
it had kind of some waves that I thought looked very ocean-like and good for a Peter Pan album. I didn't have a good one that went with this. <laughs> so we're not doing the edge punch on this one. But you totally could if you wanted to. And depending on how deep your edge punch goes, what I had done originally on this, because I had punched both the, the side folding flaps and the top and bottom folding flaps, um, what you can do is figure out how deep your thing punches and then add that depth to the measurement across on this so that when you cut it, they're still going to come in the same width um, and line up. Okay, so bottom flap has a magnet, okay? Because we're going to mat a little... Um, cut apart that's going to come up here on the top. Okay. I may have actually got my magnet up too high, but it'll be okay. The way it's going to sit, it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so these fold in, this folds up. And I just got that totally off center, didn't I? So let's try this one more time. I caught it, huh? <laughs> okay. Much better. <laughs> All right. So let's turn this around, get our other flap down, and I am going to fold this up so that I can line this up just right. Well, not those in, but. opposite one and go like that okay so now we've got those down now we can mat this inside here and before I put anything on here I'm going to make sure I trimmed this right which it looks like amazingly enough I think I did it's a miracle okay there. Okay, so this one has a belly band, which I do need to miter. Okay, so this just goes in the middle underneath everything. like so. And this one does have another folded insert that goes in here, whereas the ones that go on that very first panel are just like large tag inserts. Okay, so that one's going to sit just in there like that. You're going to close up like so. And then this, we're going to line up and figure out where we want it to go. center apparently <laughs> oh my gosh seriously not my day not my day at all and then we're gonna put our cut apart on the top like so 
and then there you go. This is the only magnet we're using in this for the record. All right, so now our fun little accordion pocket that goes on the back. So we're gonna do this with the matting and everything because I'm gonna mat this one a little bit differently. Um, this kind of had originated last summer with an album and I don't remember who had done it initially, but then Tammy had done it with um, the album she did using Graphic 45 Kaleidoscope. But we're gonna do this in such a way that it's going to continue just down the front of this, okay? But before we do that, let's get our pockets ready to go. So you had five pockets. There's a half inch difference between each one of them. They all start out at 12 inches and then the height graduates. So I've put these four together. This is what you're gonna do. So you've got your half inch score over here and then a half inch along the bottom. And then a score line at six and a quarter, okay? You're gonna do an angle cut in on the left side of the score line up to that bottom half inch. Okay, and we're going to come over here, you're going to trim along that score line, just to get over there, okay? So this is what you've got, you've got this whole piece that you're trimming out, okay? On this side, you're going to miter your corner, just like we've been doing. And then you're going to miter your top edge where this connects. All right. So before you get any further, what I do is I fold this over, get it over here to the edge where it's going to attach, make sure it's lined up top and bottom, or even along the top here, and then I push back against my score line so that if it's off, I'm fixing it when I burnish it down. Totally should have erased that first. That was really dumb. All right. Okay. So once you've done that, then you can come back, fold and burnish your other pocket pieces down. And then you're just going to glue it shut. that over and down it goes okay so then you've got your five pockets before we do anything else with these we need to figure out for sure where this one is going to sit okay and we need to make sure this is centered because of the way we're going to trim that matting piece we need to make sure this one is exactly where we want it to be. So, taking my ruler, and I know my chipboard is six and three quarters. Okay, so it should be three and three eighths on either side. This should be five and three quarters. So this one, to center it, is going to be 2 and 7 eighths in, okay? So basically, we need to come in half of an inch. Okay, so I'm just going to make a very light mark. That one's wrong. And then I'm just going to hold this here and make sure it lines up the way I want it to line up, which it does. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, and if you don't want to mat it this way, I totally get it because this is going to be a little bit more work than you maybe want to do, but it looks really cool when it's done. <laughs> so we know that this entire piece 
needs to be 7 and 7 eighths high. Scratch that. Okay. We're going to line this up in here at half an inch. Okay, so that this edge is at half an inch. I'm going to put this at, that's what I needed to do. Okay, that's what I needed to measure. It wasn't, I knew there was something else. Okay. So, this, once this, the back piece is down, you've got three inches from the top of this page to the top of that pocket, okay? So we're going to start, I'm actually going to do it this way first. We're going to line this up at two and seven eighths. And we're going to go all the way down. I'm going to turn it over, line up a half an inch, start at two and seven eighths, make sure I'm lined up right, and, and all the way down. Okay, so then we should be able to come in here, put this at two and seven eighths. Starting half an inch in, be able to come across and slide that piece out. Okay? So this piece is going to come over like this. So now we can go to seven and seven eighths. And this will be a tiny bit off by the time we're done, but not by much. Okay, we're going to cut that off. And we're going to put this piece down. Okay. We're going to make sure that we are lined up. We're centered up. We've got our eighth of an inch border. And we're going to go ahead and glue this down. Okay, so that is down where it needs to be. So we're going to go back to this piece that we've cut out. And starting with the part that lines up here, we're going to cut half inch strips. And it's going to be easier for me to keep it straight doing it this way. Okay. Half inch. No, not the tiny one. I need to pick that next one up. You're going to cut four half inch strips. Okay. This last piece is three inches high, so we're going to cut this one at two and seven inches. Okay, so that one's going to come on here, like so. We're going to go ahead and put this one down. So when this goes down, it's just almost seamless the way that this is going to flow across. Okay. You're going to take your next piece, and this is why I was stacking them with the piece that they go on, to make sure that we keep them in the right order. And I'm just going to mat 
that top edge, okay? So see how that's going to sit. Okay. And last one. All right, so now these five are going to get glued together, just a very s small bead of glue so that they kind of expand out when you pull them, okay? You can do it with tape, you can do it with glue. If you wanted to mat the rest of this, so front and back if you wanted to, if you wanted to just mat the front underneath there, you can. I'm going to leave it just like it is, okay? So all I'm going to do, take my first one, and again, you can measure this out and figure out exactly where you want this to go. In fact, I may very well have done my original one with score tape just because you could line it up exactly like that, but we're just going to line it up on top press it down okay same thing again and I am going to be very particular about this <laughs> line it up right here in the middle same thing again and press it down and I think I probably did use score tape originally just so I didn't run the risk of the sliding. So be kind of careful when you are putting that down that it doesn't shift on you when you're pushing it down. Just gonna put glue all over the back of this and down it goes just like that. just continues all the way on up. I love how that comes out. All right, so at this point, you're done, except for decorating. So we've got all four of our panels. We've got a couple of inserts to decorate that go over here. Insert here, insert that's under there. You can make some photo mats that you can put in here because this does expand out just like that. And decorate it and you're done. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the update to this and if you make this project by all means please share it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations and also on my page on Facebook Scrapping Under the Influence. Thanks!